ask everyone to please lower your voice and welcome to the Energy, Climate Change, and Environmental Justice Committee. I'm joined by my colleagues, Mr. O'Farrell, Mr. Kokorin, and Mr. Koretz. Uh, Mr. Cedillo will join us shortly. There are a number of speakers who I want to get to our public comment as soon as possible. So we're going to go ahead and take that. Um, Mr. Clerk, did you want to call the roll? I guess I just did, though. So we're done. For like we're done with that. Okay. Um, we have a number of items, and I, I, I just by the, um, just going to assume that most of you here are, for, are here for item number one. So I'm going to go ahead and ask, um, I'm going to take public comment first. If you signed up for one item, I will give you a minute. And if you have signed up for general public comment, you need to indicate that to me when I call you or do so by filling out the card in the back. So let's start with Elena Torres. Are you here? Can you want to come up? I'm going to call four speakers at a time, so please, um, please come up to the table as soon as I call your name. Carmen Estrada, come on up. Teresa Porton. Proton. Rolón. Ah, dice Proton aquí. Rolón. Kimberly Martinez. I haven't called your name. Todavía no le... Okay, give me just a second. Let me just finish calling everybody else, and I'm happy to hear what you have to say. Kimberly Martinez. Yes. So, so these are all who are... ¿Quién habla nomás español? Tres? Okay. Uh, vamos a hacer esto. Nomás van a, ustedes nomás están aquí para hablar sobre el, uh, la primer... La primer este número en la agenda. Nomás por el número uno. Okay, no general public comment. So each one gets... Each one gets one minute, and they don't have any general public comment. And you're going to be the translator. So why don't we do, Kimberly, do you, can you do me just a quick favor? Can you allow this gentleman to sit in your chair yes. so he can translate for uh, our friends here? And then I'm going to call you up, okay? Sorry about that. Elena? Okay, puede empezar y luego le van a traducir. Un minuto tiene, señora. Sí, mi nombre es, uh, buenas tardes, mi nombre es Elena Torres. Y estoy aquí, oh, perdón, I'm sorry. Elena Torres, and she's here. Poco más. Sigue. Como residente de Los Ángeles, estoy aquí para apoyar a que, que se necesita un departamento de movilización. She's here from uh, representing from the city of Los Angeles in support of the uh, CEMD. Para emergencias climáticas. For climate emergencies. CEMD. Por la salud y seguridad de todos los residentes de Los Ángeles. Gracias. For for the health and safety of all city of Los Angeles residents. Thank you. Gracias. La, la siguiente, Carmen, es, no, Carmen Estrada. Yes. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Carmen Estrada. Sigue, sigue, poco más. Uh, soy residente del centro de ley distrito 1. She's uh, Carmen Estrada, and she's a resident of CD1, Council District 1. Estoy aquí apoyando a que se haga un departamento de movilización para emergencias climáticas CMD. She's here in support of the CEMD formulation. Por la salud y seguridad de todos los residentes. For the health and safety of all the residents of the city. ¿Eso es todo? Gracias. Gracias. Um, Teresa, ¿cómo se pronuncia su apellido? Porque aquí dice... R, R O. R O. L-O-N. Ok, gracias. Puede seguir. Ajá. Mi nombre es Teresa Rolón y vengo representando al Distrito 1 um, para que, apoyando a CEMD, -C uh, para que se haga un departamento de movilización de emergencias y climático. Tengo 20 años viviendo en, en esa residencia y tengo asma. Mi niña tiene 14 años también y tiene asma. Mi nieto también tiene asma. Y es hora de que se haga una, uh, se haga este, una movilización para la salud, para toda la comunidad. Gracias. Okay, muchísimas gracias. Her name is um, Teresa Rolón, and she's from Council District 1. Um, she's here in support of the CEMD. Um, her and her family have, have suffered from a number of illnesses, including asthma. And um, she's feeling very strong about the measure to, in support of CEMD. Okay, gracias. Ya se pueden sentar. Gracias. Voy a llamar al otro grupo. Next speaker is Kimberly Martinez. Michael Zelnicker. 
You want to come up? Sure. David Fernandez. Sergio Santos. And Molly Bassler. Molly, are you here? Yes, I am. Okay. So, any of you need translation? No. Uh, ¿Usted necesita traducción, señor? No. No? Okay. Kimberly, why don't you go ahead and start? Okay. Hi, my name is Kimberly Martinez. I work in South LA, and the reason why I'm here is to support, to show support for the CEMD proposal. That's great. Next speaker. Council Sorry. members. Just reset the clock. Go ahead. My name is Michael Zellnicker, and I'm the co-chair of the Los Angeles chapter of the Climate Reality Project. The Green New Deal as proposed by Congress is only a framework. There is no specific legislation yet marked up. What I appreciate most about the CEMD proposal is how it shows the step-by-step -step way to actually create a Green New Deal implementation plan from the ground up. My hope is that by the time Los Angeles gets this up and running, hopefully sooner rather than later, it will enable and empower the national efforts for a Green New Deal to move forward in an equally egalitarian and effective way. At other times in our history, the United States and our allies mobilized around various threats. As we face an existential threat today in the form of climate change, I'm grateful to see a new mobilization being proposed. Many cities have created plans, but few have been able to effectively implement them. Climate change is such a daunting challenge because a comprehensive solution is so difficult to fashion. Changing one's light bulbs, albeit important, doesn't do it. Neither does changing one's neighbor's light bulbs. But if Angelinos, by working together, change all our light bulbs, if together Angelinos grow victory gardens, Angelinos together can lead the way in solving this crisis, <laughs> this emergency. We will show the rest of the world how we do it. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Um, I didn't say this. Uh, that was impressive. Uh, Thank you. Kimberly, did you have general public comment? You just signed up for one item? Okay. Uh, the rest of you have only signed up for item one as well? Yes. Okay. Molly, do you want to go ahead and sit by, oh. give you your own microphone, please? Yes, thank you. And we'll reserve that for our translator. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Michael. David? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is David Ferrandis. I work as the outreach coordinator with the Downtown Community Job Center, a day labor center just 10 blocks away, and also two blocks away from the Allen Co. Um, oil drilling site. Um, we've seen firsthand the impacts it has on the day labor community and the surrounding neighborhood as well. Um, so we are here, um, myself as a coordinator, as well as with other uh, members of the Day Labor Center, to call for the creation of the Climate Emergency Mobilization Department. It's urgent um, that we create a department that is accountable to the people, and it is a leader in creating uh, renewable green energies that is able to transition us into a just future that we desperately need. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sergio Santos. Yes, thank you. Thank You're you so welcome. much. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sergio Santos, and I also come here from the uh, Department of uh, Job Services in downtown L.A. Uh, and I'm here under different circumstances than when this city was considered smog city. You couldn't even see downtown L.A. You couldn't even see this beautiful building. That was a while back. We did something about that. There's no longer that area anymore. To me, it's not. Now we're here under something about a far more dangerous agenda, global warming. Once you get burned, I don't think on this, on this issue you could come back. Hopefully, we'll show the rest that LA is a leader and will always be a leader. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Molly? Yes. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Molly Baszler. I'm with the Climate Reality Project. I'm an environmentalist, and I'm here to support the mobilization. Um, you know, when, in World War II, this country mobilized uh, because of a great threat to our freedom and our existence. And we have a bigger threat, um, as we all know, global warming. So the mobilization will help us implement, and because global warming and climate change is so daunting, uh, the mobilization will help us form steps to mobilize and... Um, help each other, and we come together to help each other and the planet. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and call the next group of speakers. Uh, by the way, the speakers I just spoke, you guys signed up on, under general public comment, but you meant to sign up under item one. Is that correct? Because you all filled out cards for general public comment. That's how you have you down. Oh. But you meant item number one. Yes. I just want the record to reflect that. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you guys for uh, letting us uh, talk. Say that again? Thank you for letting us. Oh, okay. of Thank course. Thank you for listening, you guys. All of it. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Rolando Salmeroa. 
Okay, then I'm, now I'm going to, uh, these are the folks that filled out cards for item number one, but I assume you're going you're gonna to speak on item number one as well, right? Eric Roman? Or Roman? Eric? Are you here? Anybody know who Eric is? Are you in the back? Okay. Seems like you have friends. Steve Ducey? Dan Cagle? Dan Cagle, are you here? Yes. Melanie Winter? Yep. Melanie, you want to come on up? You know what? You know, never mind. Doesn't, I'm calling too many people up. Sounds like all, all four. Okay, very well. Thank you for your patience. Um, Ronaldo? Yeah. Thank you. This is what the democracy look like. Um, I want to get this, you know, about this book that has been published by a PhD. If you please research this book, because we already have technologies, immense amount, electromagnetic technologies, that can give you a lot of power and being hidden from us. Sir? This is not a theory. Sir, I need you to speak into the microphone, please, okay? okay? This is a reality that we have, and you, people that live us over here in Los Angeles, have to open your mind for new ideas. We don't have much time. This thing of the global warming is real, you know, and it's that the oxygen that we breathe, phytoplankton in the ocean is dying, and that generates 70% of the oxygen that we breathe. If we don't do act immediately, you know, we want to be uh, fried. I, I agree with some people that live, the Los Angeles leader, but the only if we open our mind and we study to, you know, it doesn't come for free. You have to do your homework. Thank you very much. Our next speaker. Thank you, sir. Eric? Good afternoon, council members. Eric Roman, uh, representing Physicians for Social Responsibility Los Angeles and the LEAP LA Coalition. Um, first, I just want to thank uh, the leadership of this committee, especially um, the chair and council member Koretz, um, for uh, moving forward this effort to respond to this emergency. Um, we did get a chance just this morning to review uh, the report that was released from the CLA and CAO. Um, there are a lot of good things in this report. We just, just want to note that we have some concern with proposal to extend uh, the process through the hiring of a, of a consultant. So we uh, think many people here today will speak to the urgency uh, of moving forward in the establishment of this department and also uh, the critical um, role of frontline communities um, in shaping the uh, work of the department and its establishment. And we applaud the uh, leadership, especially of the chair, in trying to move forward those pieces. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, I'm here representing my neighborhood council. I believe I'm entitled to five minutes of public comment. Uh, we have a community impact statement on file for this item. Sure. Great. Thank you. Um, so you'll see uh, it is reflected in the record. I don't know if they want to reset my time on this. Uh, but my name is Steve Ducey. I'm a board member with the Central Hollywood Neighborhood Council. I'm the chair of our Legislative Action Committee. Uh, I'm also a member of the Democratic Socialists of America who have uh, steadfastly supported the Green New Deal. Um, um, our community impact statement is on file. It is part of the council record. Um, you is there for your review. Uh, the one part that I wanted to highlight is that we are in support of the Climate Emergency Mobilization Department, uh, and we're calling on the city of Los Angeles to accelerate its carbon-free goal from 2050 to 2025. Um, obviously, everybody here in this room is well aware of the reality of climate science uh, and the reality of the crisis that we are facing. Uh, there are a number of uh, articles, uh, each of them equally terrifying, that continue to come out in the wake of the IPCC report uh, regarding the severity of this crisis. Uh, two in particular that I want to bring to the Council's attention uh, come to us from David Wallace Wells. Uh, one is from the New York Magazine, uh, and the title of it is, The UN Says Climate Genocide is in Our Future, But the Future is Actually Much Worse. Uh, the fact is, this is from his article, further delay will only make the problem worse. If we started a decarbonization effort today, a gargantuan undertaking to overhaul our energy systems, building and transportation infrastructure, how we produce our food, the necessary rate of emissions reduction would be about 5% per year. If we delay another decade, it will require us to cut emissions by some 9%. Per year. This is why the UN Secretary General believes we have only until 2020 to change course and get started. That's a year from now, okay? So what can we do? This is from his piece in the New York Times called Time to Panic. By the way, who is we? 
The size of the threat from climate change means that organization is necessary at every level. Communities, states, nations, and international agreements to coordinate action among them. But most of us don't live in the halls of the United Nations or the boardrooms in which the Paris Climate Agreement was negotiated. Instead, we live in a consumer culture that tells us we can make our political mark on the world through where we shop, what we wear, how we eat. This is how we get things like Tim Lanson's recent dietary recommendations for those who wish to eat to mitigate climate change, or suggestions like those published in the Washington Post. But conscious consumption is a cop-out, a neoliberal diversion from collective action, which is what is necessary. People should try to live by their own values about climate, as with everything else. But the effects of individual lifestyle choices are ultimately trivial compared with what politics can achieve. That is the role that you as our city leaders represent. It is up to you to create the politics of change at this decisive moment. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the word emergency. In 2015, the city declared a homelessness emergency. That was four years ago. We have pledged to build 10,000 units of permanent supportive housing. That number is dwindling down to 6,000. Not one of those units is open to this day. We do not have that kind of time. It took three years from motion to ordinance to get a short-term rental uh, regulations in the city. We don't have that kind of time. If we do not organize with the urgency that this moment requires, we are not just looking at the deleterious consequences of this on our city, but on the world at large. We are looking at consequences that don't just mean economic instability, that don't just mean hotter summers. We are looking at the, we're looking at genocide for people in frontline impacted communities. We are looking at a city that is trying to welcome the Olympic Games in 2028. How hot is it going to be in this city when we are trying to host track and field events at the, uh, at the Memorial Coliseum? It is incumbent upon us as organizers, as uh, community members, as leaders in our neighborhood councils, and it is incumbent upon you as our city leaders to treat this emergency with the urgency that it demands. We do not have the time to wait another year, another day, another moment. The climate science has been real for decades. It has been real for decades, and people have been screaming about this for so long, and we are just now finally starting to pay attention. Okay? And if we address this emergency with the urgency that we've addressed other emergencies, such as housing and homelessness, it's too late. We're not going to have the impact that we need in order to mitigate the consequences, many of which of these consequences are happening whether we act or not. If we act starting today, if we started acting yesterday, a lot of these consequences are here and we can't stop them. And all we can really do is hope to mitigate them. Um, so that's why I call on you all for bold leadership on this, swift leadership on this, and uh, it's time for the city of Los Angeles to start really confronting one of the most politically and logistical difficult issues that we face, and that is the use of internal combustion single occupancy automobiles. We cannot confront this crisis until we are willing to take the hard political steps to end the use of cars in this city. Thank you. Um, so, Dan, were you next? Um, can I just give a, a, yeah, he spoke already, he spoke already. So let me call another three more speakers in. Uh, you're Dan, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Melanie Winter, I think I saw you. Uh, Lisa Hart, Strella Servas, and Mia Crosby. Maya. Maya. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Um, so you've all filled out a card for item number one, no general public comment, is that correct? Okay. There is more than 25 speakers left to speak, so if I can give you a bit of advice, if we can get down to why you're supporting item number one, I don't think any of us need to be convinced about the realities of climate change. I think we're all very well aware of that. But if we can, I need, to, we would love to hear your feedback on the establishment of the department and how that could be useful when taking this up um, after you all speak. Okay? Thank you. Dan, go ahead. Every building that we build that is not electrified, every car that people buy that is not electric, is a missed opportunity to solve this problem. If the establishment of the Climate Emergency Department can speed up the process of the city's building codes 
being updated to require all new buildings to be ready for EVs and ready for electric appliances and to remove the bias in favor of natural gas heating, um, then I'm all for it. This is an emergency. If we need an emergency department to respond to an emergency, let's get one quick. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Next speaker, Melanie. Good afternoon, council members. I'm Melanie Winter, the founder and director of The River Project. We work on watershed management and climate resilience here in Los Angeles. I'm really excited today to be able to move forward the motion that was brought here a bit more than a year ago, the 90-day report back. Um, to, to discuss that, uh, the establishment of a climate emergency mobilization department the charge was to make something work within the city structure and our charter, which was set up to avoid corruption, which is great, but it also has slowed us down. So working within our existing system, um, between then and now, the LEAP group has structured something that can allow us to move quickly within the existing city structure that can create a coordinating body that can establish climate budgets and do all of this without extending the city's existing budget requirements. This is a phenomenal thing. I would love to see a little more detail in the report back that reflects the proposal that was put back in the interim. I get that this is a, a response to the motion from a year ago, but a little more detail on the specific concrete structure and actions that you can find in Councilmember Koretz's um, document for today would be terrific and productive. Thank you. That's great input. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Lisa Hart. Hi. Uh, my name is Lisa. I'm with the Neighborhood Council Sustainability Alliance, which now has 46 member neighborhood councils across the city. Uh, today I wanted to tell you about a program that we ran with the city's support and that we hope to run again, uh, perhaps uh, underneath this new department. It's called Cool Blocks. Uh, as a bit of background, uh, according to the UN, cities are responsible for up to 70% of greenhouse gases. And about 70% of those uh, emissions come from us as residents. So we have the power, uh, we hope, to control to some extent how we drive, how we use our energy. But so many people don't see that they have that power and they don't see what good it would do. They think it's futile because they think it's one drop in the bucket. And Coolbox is a program to change that. The idea is that we bring together people on a block, we help them make a difference, we help them see that they're making a difference, and we also help them prepare for emergencies. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Estrella. Hello, uh, my name is Estrella Servas. I'm with the LEAP LA Coalition in strong support of the Climate Emergency Mobilization Department. Uh, I read the CLA and CAO report that just got released minutes before this hearing, and uh, what we need right now is a, a strong climate department to be implemented, passed and implemented. However, the CLA and CAO report's recommendation for a 60-day RFP drafting process for a consultant um, will further delay the process to authorize a, C, a strong climate emergency mobilization department. The LEAP LA is very concerned about this element in the report. Um, however, this, the LEAP LA strongly supports um, the chair's uh, recommendations and, and Mr. Koretz's recommendations for a motion to work with frontline communities to develop the strategies and specific policies of the Climate Emergency Mobilization Department and support the, um, to authorize the hiring of a general manager now and using the CSOs and the CROs to staff up the CEMD right now. Um, my name is Maya Crosby, and I'm speaking on behalf of Youth Climate Strike Los Angeles. Um, we support a climate emergency mobilization department because the youth, the students, are very scared. We're all very scared of the reality that climate strike, that climate uh, is posing to us, and we feel helpless in the face of this. We feel like there's nothing we can do because we are told we can't skip school, we can't make our voices heard but you guys can do that for us. You can help us have a future, and really what I'm trying to say is that you all are the people who can keep us from feeling horrible later on. We, we really wanted to tell you that there's people all over watching. My, my organization is currently live streaming this, and we really do not want you to disappoint us. We're scared, and we need your guys' help and you set a precedent for all of the rest of L.A. County. Thank you very much. Okay, the next
next speakers are Connor Everts, Amanda Wagner, Lisette Hernandez, and Gloria Medina. Hi, Connor. How are you? Fine. How are you? Go ahead. Thank you. My name is Connor Everts. I'm here today representing the Green LA Coalition. Our water committee, April 13th last year, submitted support <laughs> for this. Um, we still support it, and we support you moving forward. Uh, we recognize the emergency. I recognize the number of people in the um, room here, and I've heard from many others. Uh, maybe they're young enough that they can carry this on and I can retire soon, but um, I hope you take this opportunity uh, to move this forward. I realize that is a challenge within government and a bureaucracy, but the time is now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Connor. Our next speaker is Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda Wagner. I'm a watershed research fellow with Hilda Bay. Um, as an organization, we really care about these issues. We're already seeing the ocean acidification, the sea level rise impact. So just wanted to come out here and let you guys know, us and our 10,000 supporters as well uh, all support this. Um, primarily, too, because it's about implementation. We need this department to help implement a lot of the plans that we already have. Um, and it really is a quite urgent issue, as people have spoke about today. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Lisette? Hi, Lizette Hernandez with PSRLA, and I'm here to speak for the CEMD as well. We're interested in, um, first of all, well, we represent 2,000 members, physicians, and health professionals. We're also interested in making sure that our communities are detoxified, that our environment is decarbonized, and that the process is democratized with frontline communities at the helm of the innovative uh, solutions, because we are the bodies of evidence, and we also happen to be engineers, scientists, doctors, doctors, health professionals um, that come with many solutions. We have many pilot projects that are ready to um, take off, and we are waiting for you, really, um, to accelerate this process um, and are thankful to Council Members Martinez, Coretz, um, and Krikorian for continuing the leadership and, and look forward to working more closely with the rest of you. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Gloria. Yes, hi, I'm here with SCOPE uh, representing South LA and um, I'm here because South LA families are feeling the impacts related to extreme heat and worsening air quality, which are only heightened by the existing economic conditions and the surrounding built environment, as demonstrated this weekend by the tanker truck explosion in the heart of South LA. Low-income communities of color are at the front line, feeling the disproportionate burden. It is critical for those most impacted by the threat to be engaged in informing LA's climate policy. It is imperative that we have a CEMD, and it's extremely important that the process includes a community assemblies process in key ge uh, geographies, in frontline communities. We need to ensure we integrate community knowledge into a citywide mobilization effort. To ensure accountability, we are also advocating for an Oversight Commission, which includes frontline environmental justice communities, labor workers, and youth. Also, we are asking for the creation of seven area climate commissions. These commissions will provide direction on how the city wide mobilization should unfold, especially in frontline communities. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Next group of speakers is Na Nancy Halpern. I'm going to, how do you pronounce your last name? Nancy. Sorry, I just know you as Nancy. <laughs> um, Laura Ga Gracia? It's Gracia or Garcia? Gracia. Gracia. Uh, Melissa Pantoja? Melissa? And Maria Gasca? Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. Good afternoon, um, Councilwoman and uh, Council Members. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. My name is Nancy Halpern Ibrahim, and I represent Esperanza Community Housing, People Not Pozos, Stand LA, and Leap LA, um, to be here today to speak in strong support of the Climate Emergency Mobilization Department and to appreciate your leadership, among others, on this particular project. Um, as has been mentioned, South LA has been reeling not only from the parked tanker truck that exploded this weekend, but also the Phillips 66 plant that burns till this day and other flare-ups in uh, the Wilmington area. 
These are climate emergencies that happen every day. And while we have appreciation for the CLA and the CAO, the urgency of this moment cannot be underscored. And I think it bears repeating by every speaker who's taken the mic so far. Practically, we would like to propose that the resilience officers and the sustainability officers be redeployed to staff up the CEMD immediately, spending four days out of five with the CEMD, bringing in integrated expertise, and then bringing the CEMD back into their home departments. Right. We also need to suggest that no, grant writers in the city be deployed immediately to grab resources for the city LA and purpose for the CEMD. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, next speaker is Laura. Good afternoon. My name is Laura Gracia. I am the Climate Adaptation and Resilience Enhancement Coordinator with Communities for a Better Environment. We're here to urge the support of the Climate Emergency Mobilization Department because it ensures that frontline, low-income communities of color, the elderly and the young, the most vulnerable to climate change, are prioritized in city sustainability efforts. Our communities have refineries, diesel trucks, in, in large industry, freeways. Climate change is not a thing of the future. It is a thing of right now. It is a thing of last summer. It is a thing of yesterday. And it is a thing of tomorrow. Um, from extreme heat, increased smog, increasing and exacerbated respiratory illnesses, um, our communities have been facing the effects of pollution and climate change. Just this past weekend, there was a fire at, uh, at a harbor refinery, several different flaring um, incidents that lasted over minutes long, all while people were walking around in the park nearby. With 40 years of grassroots organizing experience, sorry, that's why we fully encourage the support of community assemblies and frontline and most impacted communities. This creates real community-led solutions that will address the root cause of our climate problem and steer clear of false solutions. Thank you. Next speaker is um, Melissa. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Melissa Pantoja, and I'm, I come from South LA. I'm very excited to hear that we may soon have the CEMD, and we need it because our neighborhoods, but specifically uh, communities of color, have suffered from negative health outcomes related to excessive vehicle emissions and chemicals released from petroleum extraction facilities located in the middle of our neighborhood. We look forward to the day that our children do not suffer from respiratory, nasal, and asthma-related conditions because they choose to play outdoors. We seek environmental justice and are willing to work closely with the CEMD department to provide our community knowledge. We look forward to participating in an inclusive decision-making process that engages and empowers our community and results in healthy and vibrant neighborhoods. We ask that our city council members um, support the development of the CEMD. Thank you. Next speaker is Maria. Hello, my name is Maria Gasca. I'm a first-generation low-income Chicano Angelina, UCLA undergrad, scientific researcher, environmental justice organizer, and intern at Four or Five Gyres. I and countless Angelinos of color became involved in environmental issues, not for preservation's sake, but to demand access to clean air, water, and soil in this very city. Working on plastic pollution with Five Gyres, we understand that these processes aren't linear because for me, for us, it is not about banning plastic bags to keep our streets clean because we still have our asthma in South Central and the oil wells in our backyard in Inglewood. So if we're still burning crude plastic and gasoline, are we really putting an effort to make all of LA green when we ban plastic, but we hesitate to civically support those fighting the well-oiled climate catastrophe machine? We are the front line and epicenter, and although socioeconomic geographical borders try to keep us silenced and contained, climate change is borderless, it is districtless, it is cityless. We are tired of being the town criers, and we hope that with the establishment and funding of CEMT, we can put away our soapboxes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker is Lydia Ponce. Followed by Ruby Dutcher, Andres Ramirez, <coughs> Lydia, Ruby, Andres, there you are, Agustin Cabrera. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Lydia Ponce, American Indian Movement, Mayo, Quechua, and adopted by Gloria Arianas Tangba. 
Indigenous people have the right to give or withhold free prior and informed consent to legislation and development of lands, their lands, territories, and our natural resources. This is the Article 19 of the UN DRIP. Imagine if that was common practice. So with no further delay, we the indigenous of LA, and with urgency, want to support and see this move through faster than tomorrow. People in this room are ready to take their seat at the table for the difficult conversations to remedy the environmental decisions made of the past. Ready are the local tribes in all four directions to create solutions, to work in collaboration for a better healthy future of all of Yagna. The time is now. We support the CEMD as an opportunity for all of our community in healing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ruby? Hi. Um, my name is Ruby Dutcher. Oh, let me move this. Sorry. Um, and I'm excited to be here both as a representative of Sunrise, um, Sunrise Movement, and um, as a lifelong resident of CD13. Um, so we are here to support the CEMD. Um, it's, you know, as people who have put a lot of work into bringing the Green New Deal into the national conversation, um, we're very excited to see a Green New Deal moving forward in Los Angeles. Um, we believe that the CEMD um, is the city's best and most readily available vehicle. Um, to roll out an LA Green New Deal. Um, it will enable the city to transform the plan and the vision that, but you know, that without concrete steps, that is the Green New Deal, um, and transform those into policies that will engage communities and make life better for, um, and more bearable for Angelinos as we face the challenges of the coming decades. Um, LA has a chance right now um, with the CEMD um, to roll out a Green New Deal before it, it goes forward at the national level. Um, and I really want to encourage us to take that chance because I think that, you know, we can serve as an example for other cities and how to, how to um, put forward this kind of policy in a just way. Thank you, Thank you Ruby. Next speaker. <clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Andres Ramirez. I'm here on behalf of Pacoma Beautiful and the Los Angeles Clean Energy Coalition. Um, I first want to thank the city council for your leadership that you've shown in regards to, to a transition to clean energy and moving away from natural gas. The work is not over. There's still a, a, a diesel power plant in Sun Valley that we need to address. But we, we're here in support of the CEMD because we believe that's a very necessary step in the right direction, that bold leadership that we need to set the trend, not only locally but nationally, of how to resource you know, the fight against climate change and prioritizing, more, most importantly, frontline communities who, who have, we've heard like, time and again have burned the brunt of fossil fuel usage. So we ask that the transition to a CEMD happen in a timely manner and in an equitable manner. And we look forward to, to further participating with your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Agustin? Good afternoon. Um, Agustin Cabrera with Lane and Our Water LA. Um, Lane supports the formation of the CEMD because it serves an example of policies that adv advance by the city that meet the need of working people, including unionized working families to meet our urgent climate goals. We are hopeful the CMD can create solutions such as the energy efficiency program at the DWP, which provides free services to ratepayers that will save energy and also reduce their energy cost while creating pathways to good union jobs through the UPCT program. And lastly, we can't have a just transition without creating good jobs for our communities. The CMD brings us closer to creating jobs that enable folks in our communities to help build the new green infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you. Our uh, next speakers are Elena Torres. Elena? Ya pasó? Okay, pues la tengo que otra vez. Entonces, no, no hay otra Elena Torres? No? Okay. Bruce Res Resnick? Bruce? Bruce Resnick, are you here? Ben Goloff? Maro Kakuzian? Did I mess that up? Okay. How about Maro? Uh, model? Model? Yeah. Okay, that's that. Thank you, Mr. Kokorian. Adam Pilarski. So these are the last four speakers on item number one. Are there any more speakers who wish to speak on item number one that have not signed up? Can you please do so in the back so your name can appear on here? I did sign up. What is your name? Joe Galliano. It's not on here, sir. Maybe you filled out for a different item? Maybe, oh, sir, you filled out item number two. That's okay. If you already filled that out, I can take you up next. Uh, Bruce? Yes. Go ahead. Sure. 
Uh, my name is Bruce Resnick, the Executive Director of Los Angeles Waterkeeper. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I'm here in strong support of the CEMD. Um, I am one of many water groups here at Green LA and Our Water LA um, because we recognize the, the inherent connection between water, energy, climate. Um, thanks to the leadership of the City Council, this committee, the Mayor, and even the County, we've made tremendous strides on that water energy, whether it's moving our coastal power plants, inland recycling our wastewater, Measure W, groundwater remediation. But the CEMD is really critical to go that next step. We need to be able to coordinate. When you're thinking of climate, you've got to coordinate among your water, your land use, your transportation, your energy, working with frontline communities, creating green economy. All these things are integrally related. And the only way to do that is through an integrated, coordinated effort. And that's why I'm here to support today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker is Ben. Thank you. My name is Ben Goloff, and I'm a climate campaigner at the Center for Biological Diversity, which is a national nonprofit conservation organization with more than a, a million and a quarter uh, members and online activists dedicated to the protection of endangered species and wild places. We strongly support the Climate Emergency Mobilization Department, starting with hiring a general manager and resourcing the department's necessary infrastructure. We're a science-based organization, and the science is deadly clear. We don't need to go into it. Our carbon budget is already overspent. New fossil fuel production is incompatible with limiting global warming in line with Paris climate goals. And many existing projects, including those here in the city of LA, must be phased out. Carbon emissions from reserves and existing uh, oil and gas fields alone would take us beyond 1.5 degrees Celsius and result in catastrophic warming, as you know. So we need a climate emergency mobilization department empowered to lead the just transition off fossil fuels to 100% renewable energy. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next speaker, Maru. Thank you, Madam Chair, for allowing this discussion. And thank you to all the community-based organizations and leaders in the room whose shared commitment to environmental justice shaped the core principles and foundation of the Climate Emergency Mobilization Department, the CEMD. My name is Maru Kakwisian, and I'm here with Physicians for Social Responsibility Los Angeles to support the annual climate budget, a critical governance tool to establishing the city's baseline condition for a rapid reduction of greenhouse gases and criteria pollutants and core to interdepartmental coordination. Modeled by Oslo, Norway, the same region of the youth climate strike calling for a Green New Deal and climate emergency initiated by 16-year-old and Nobel Peace Prize nominee Greta Thunberg. In Los Angeles, youth lead the fight against climate change, and they are the ones saying justice delayed is justice denied. We must do a better job of preventing further harm to human health and the environment, and incremental change will not get us there. We're asking our leaders to take the leap for climate, the leap for equity, by supporting the first steps of the Climate Emergency Mobilization Department. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Adam. I'm here with the Democratic Socialists of America, and while we support the initiatives that the CMD has taken thus far, we ask again that you accelerate it. LA has the opportunity to make the headlines either as an example and a paragon of the climate change measures that are needed to protect its city and its citizens from the dire effects that are without a doubt coming, or as another city that has managed to delay it further and internally displace its citizens. Therefore, we ask that you continue to do the good work that you are doing by accelerating this only further. Thank you. Next speakers are Jesus Villalaba, Laura Muraida. Are you here, Laura? Okay. How about Sofia Rakovic? Sofia, are you here? And Jack Edit? Jack? Anyone else here to speak on item number one? Some of you might have filled out uh, cards for item number two. Do we need to fill out another card? No, let me go through this, and then maybe you're... I'll just keep going. Uh, why don't we go ahead and start with Jesus. Okay, hello. I'm Jesus Villalba, and I'm a resident of Southgate, California, here in the L.A. region. 
um, and I'm with Youth Climate Strike Los Angeles. Um, so like all students, we believe that the effects of climate change are dangerous and it is important that we stop emissions and we do what we can now because the more action we take and the earlier we take it, the bigger of a chance we give our future generations and the bigger chance we give for life in general. Um, so today, council members will have the great responsibility of voting and making a decision for their constituents. Today, council members will not vote for money or political gain, although I hope none of us were here for that in, in that intention anyway. Um, today, council members will vote their conscience and they will vote for the future of the earth and the generations to come. Today, council members need to come to the realization that tomorrow is today and that action is needed now. Please do not disappoint the youth. Thank you. Thank you. You are Jesus, correct? Uh, how about Laura? Hi. 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 My name is Laura Muraida, and I'm also with SCOPE in South LA. And we are in strong support of the Climate Emergency Mobilization Department and the integrated approach that it takes, as well as the role, the strong oh, role. No, just of the a public. second. Um, Sergeants, can you help out? There's two dogs back there. Sorry. Hold her clock, hard time. I'm sorry, restart? Is everything, back, is everything okay back there? All right. Sorry to cut you off. Look. No, it's okay. Um, so. Go ahead. Okay. Um, again, my name is Laura Amuraida. I'm with SCOPE in South LA, and we're in strong support of the Climate Emergency Mobilization Department, which puts forward an integrated approach that's led by a strong and robust public sector um, we, in particular, want to lift up that there remains a 500,000 unallocated um, amount in the budget this year, and we recommend using this amount to hire the general manager and to implement the community assembly process. We feel that we feel strongly that this is an opportunity to begin the process of a community-led vision and implementing the CMD proposal and that this budget allocation provides that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sophia followed by Jack. Good afternoon. Sophia Ratkovich here. I am a small business owner, a mother of three, and an ocean lover. Um, I'm here because the same beaches that I grew up going to, I now take my kids to. And the amount of pollution that I see on there is just overwhelming. Um, my kids' grandparents also own a family-owned restaurant uh, in Malibu uh, that serves seafood. And so my son talks about being able to surf and then work at the restaurant and just, you know, this idyllic life. And... It worries me to think about the fact that offshore oil drilling, you know, ocean acidification, all these plastics ending up in the ocean are threatening that lifestyle that we come to, you know, just view as just the American dream and just what it is to live in California. So I urge you to take action now because by the, he's 13 now, but by the time he's actually able to work at the restaurant, this lifestyle is all under threat. Like, we need to take action now, and I know that you guys know that the science is clear, so it's really about just making the good choice. Thank you. Mr. Herman, this is your first and final warning. You've been disrupting this meeting since you got here. You've been warned. Jack, do you want to go ahead? Yeah. Hello. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. My name is Jack Eit, and I'm with uh, SoCal 350 Climate Action. We're a local chapter of, of International Climate Change Organization, 350.org. Uh, and here also as an urban planner, uh, the need to, to transform this city in absolute rap rapid fashion is is imperative as as has been stated so we're in full support of this effort and i think implementation and giving it teeth is is actually uh, you know the key here because um i think there's there's a budget to start as was just just noted um it, this needs to happen now and it needs to be comprehensive because we've got we've got massive transportation problems the, the way development has been going um, in LA and around LA is it has not been focused. Also, energy uh, production. We had the good, the no gas plants recently, but we need, we need to transform our whole system. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, next speaker, <laughs> Sibyl Asur. Sibyl. Joe Galliani. Bahar, are you here? Yes. You want to come up? 
And I think that's going to do it. Any other speakers? Oh, we have one more. Roshan Akula? I'm sorry. I'm doing my best I can. <laughs> Do you want to start, Sybil? Sure. Hi, my name is Sybil Azer, and I'm a member of the Climate Reality Project. And um, I'm here to speak to you not as an expert, not as... Um, an interest person. I'm here to speak to you as a mother. I have a four-year-old and a seven-year-old, and my son has had asthma since he was at least two years old. He's seven now. Um, we live 560 feet from a freeway. We live in a nice neighborhood, but we are close to the freeway. There are uh, tons of emissions that come out of the freeway that affect his health every single day. And in addition, I have lived in LA for 33 years. I've lived in various locations all over the city, and I have seen a marked change. We've all seen it in how rapidly the city, how, uh, how quickly the climate is changing. And last summer, I live in Sherman Oaks. I'm in the valley. And we hit a high of 117 degrees. And we had a blackout for three days. Our neighborhood turned into a ghost town. Everyone disappeared, went to families' houses, went to hotels. We were no longer um, able to inhabit our houses. So I, I am in strong support of the initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go ahead, sir. Good afternoon, Madam Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Joe Galliani. I came here today from the city of Torrance, where I am the founding organizer of South Bay, Los Angeles 350. And I first want to note the historic nature of today's committee meeting. Uh, I've been working on climate action with this city and the county for a decade now, and we've uh, been waiting for this day to come, and I thank you for this day. But I also want to ask you to step up and become the example that the rest of the county needs. There are five million people here in this city, but I live in another city and there are another five million in the county. In the South Bay, we have 15 different cities. In the city of Carson, they're choking on air pollution from the refineries. In El Segundo, likewise. In Wilmington, likewise. We need you to make this happen so we can go and use you as the example in Torrance, in Carson, in Wilmington, and all the other cities in, in our area and say, this is what's possible. Now you need to step up and do it. So please, make this happen. We support you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Bahar? Yes, hi. Good afternoon. My name is Bahar. I'm here as a um, socio-ecological and universal justice activist. And I'm here to address a serious concern um, that is all about irresponsible leadership and, and lack of understanding of an energy crisis that is related with the way that our resources are being spent and this goes in various sectors from health to social injustice to e economical injustice and educational injustice and to address for your leadership to do something to make correction and understand that climate change is an emergency problem of short-sighted people that are looking to make personal gain with, to the adv advantage of a few and this disadvantage of the many. And this includes all the people, including the ones that are making advantages by making personal gain and helping the rich get richer while the poor get poorer. And climate, the climate injustice is a problem that's causing horrendous disadvantages to all of us. So please understand this and make this correction. Thank you very Thank much. You. Roshan? Yes. As you know, this past Friday, I was here with a lot of young people here to address climate change, and one of the city council members told, that of, told us of this meeting here today. A lot of these young people are in school today, so I'm also speaking on behalf of them because I'm a young person who will also be affected with climate change. It's real. The climate change and energy crisis needs to be addressed promptly. This is, a, this is an actual national emergency. And we need to take action now, not, not, to, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, not next year, not years from now. Today, starting now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our speakers. I don't have any other speakers. Your name's not on here, Herman. Go ahead. What card, what did you fill out a card for? Item one now. 
Okay, item one, one minute. You know you lie to public. No motherfucking transparency for a nigger like me who wants to confront opposition to why you white fucking asshole bitch no let me speak I fucking signed kiosk three motherfucking time while I fucking disabled my fucking dog and you call me crazy you fucking crazy you hear the man that man said fuck you children can't come out of school to come in opposition to your fucking oil greedy fucking bitches like Caruso you know Caruso He's a billionaire, Steve Sobolov, suck cock, a mayor, Sobolov, LAPD commission, nigga, no I right. So you, transportation nigga, remember, you fuck with public, fuck uh, no disobedience, and niggas like you, like Paul Cochrane's fat fucking wife, go to hell, and his h rag son, dick. All right, um, members, okay, guys. Guys, this is what we deal with every single time there's a public comment section of our, of our meeting. So if you feel this offended about what this man just said, then I suggest you write a letter and direct it to the city attorney's office, okay? Please do. But this, this is his First Amendment rights, just like everyone else has, and this is what we have to endure every single time we have public comment. In so, every meeting. Thank you very much. Um, uh, there are no more speakers. Did anyone else fill out... Anyone else wish to speak under any of these items that I have not called your name? Then I will go ahead and close public comment, general public comment, and I'll, I'll comment for all items, okay? Uh, Mr. City Clerk, why don't we go ahead and take up items number five and six together? Certainly, Madam Chair. Before I do that, I'm so sorry. Let's go ahead and approve items three and four on consent. Are there any objections, members? Sorry. Items three and four? Seeing none, okay. We're going to go ahead and approve those items on consent, number three and number four. Let's go ahead and read items five and six into the record. Certainly, Madam Chair. Item number five relates to Motion Martinez-Rodriguez and Beer Sanitation Report relative to the Safe Clean Water Program and related matters. And number six is a motion, Kukorian Martinez-Rodriguez, Blumenfield, relative to a list of proposed Safe Clean Water Program eligible projects for the remediation of the San Fernando Groundwater Basin. We have a report from the Bureau of Sanitation on these matters. Yes, thank you very much, colleagues. These two motions before us are related to a stormwater measure that was recently passed by uh, voters. If I can ask the members of the public to please um, lower your voice so we, we have two items to get underway before we address items one and two. So in the upcoming weeks, we will have a thorough conversation about the implementation of our water storm efforts, our strategy, and our local and regional efforts as well. But you, you are here to give us a, a quick up, update and, as to what you want us, what additional recommendations you have before us. Is that right, Tracy? Yes, okay. correct. You want to go ahead and take up? Yes, Auto Tracy Menemiti, Chief Operating Officer, LA Sanitation and Environment. Um, as you all know, uh, the county's Measure W Safe Clean Water Program uh, initiative was adopted in November. And uh, prior to that and subsequent to that, LA Sanitation um, and Environment has been very actively working on the development of the program from the city perspective and how we will be coordinating with the county. There will be follow-up reports. Um, our, our major uh, request this afternoon is uh, for front funding of $2.2 million. We're proposing that that come from our sewer construction and maintenance Fund 760. Um, the reason that we're asking for this funding is because the county um, is planning to issue a call for projects for the regional components um, of Measure W um, this spring, uh, as, as early as next month. And we are very anxious to put together the details on the feasibility reports for projects that we uh, anticipate submitting to compete for regional funding. So it's very important for us to get a head start on this. Um, Monies coming in from Measure W are anticipated to be distributed in the spring or summer of 2020. Um, the call for projects, as I mentioned, is imminent within the next month or few months. Um, so this front funding will help us get, uh, get the ball rolling, get these projects going so that we um, can compete for the county money. Sure. Members, does anybody have any questions? <coughs> no? Yeah, oh, Mr. yeah, just one. Uh, a few years ago when I was on the Metropolitan Water District Board, we got $20 million approved for 
uh, to help clean up the San Fernando Valley Aquifer. Uh, do we know whatever happened to that money? Because if there's some way to use it, it's still a, a, a significant opportunity. Great. I, uh, no, Council Member, no, but we would be working with water and power and I could get back to you. Okay. Thank you. Ma right. Madam Chair, it might yes. be best for that question yeah, I to wanna... be answered by DWP. I don't know if they have a rep here or they could I, provide Do you have a rep here from DWP? I don't see I one. Saw Wendy here yeah, she, she earlier. I think they might have left already. They might have been here for the other two items. But, but I do want to, anyone else can, here that can answer Mr. Koretz's question? Can someone get back to Mr. Koretz? Yes. We will work with DWP and get back to you with an answer on that question. Thank you. Uh, I do want to ask the CAO staff to go ahead and look at the um, sanitation recommendations and submit a report uh, to the file prior to the council taking action on this loan request, if you can do that. Are there any other questions, members? Okay, for item number five, let's go ahead and adopt both uh, the motion and Ali Sand's loan recommendation for an interim loan from their March 15th report. And let's go ahead and adopt Mr. Kikorian's motion on item number six. Are there any objections? Nope. Seeing none, that will be the order. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and take up items number one and two. Can you read those into the record, please? Certainly, Madam Chair. Item number one, CAO CLA report relative to the establishment of a climate emergency mobilization department and related matters. Pursuant to motion, Coretz, Bloomfield, Huizar, and Bonin. And number two, motion, Bonin, Harris Dawson, Coretz, Martinez, Price, Rodriguez, Wesson, relative to the development of a Green New Deal for Los Angeles. Thank you very much. I think most of the speakers here today are interested in uh, how we're going to take action and move forward on the establishment of the Climate uh, Emergency Management Department. We have members of the CLA's office and the CEO's office here this uh, afternoon. Mr. Koretz, did you have opening statements? Yes, uh, Go ahead, I sir. do. Uh, first of all, thank you for hearing this today, Madam Chair, and especially for leading the way with uh, the city's Green New Deal proposal. I know these are core issues that you've been working on for years, and I'm pleased to have the opportunity to work with you uh, on them. I see the creation of the Climate Emergency Mobilization Department and the development of the Green New Deal as complementary. In other words, as it actively mobilizes the city, the county, and the region, hopefully, the CEMD will implement the Green New Deal policies that we create. Um, I also want to thank and acknowledge Councilmember Bob Blumenfield for co-authoring the original motion with me. As we begin the discussion, I want to acknowledge two parallel emergencies. There's no question that we're in a climate emergency of epic proportions, so much so that the very existence of humanity is at stake. Um, today's examples, uh, the historic and deadly floods going on right now in Nebraska, Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and South Dakota, which pose a real threat to farms and our food supply. Also, there's a cyclone that Mozambique is recovering from, which appears to have killed over 1,000 people. That's just today's disasters. Um, when I first got on the council, there usually would be one or two like this a month. Now there is rarely a day that passes without some truly dramatic uh, disaster like the ones we're facing today. But also there's a simultaneous public health emergency. Our frontline communities continue after decades to struggle every day um, against toxic air, water, and ground pollution. It should be a basic right that to live in Los Angeles shouldn't mean that your kid has to have asthma or that your kid is exposed to toxic chemicals on a daily basis. So I've been working for the last couple of years with a group of organizations that have collectively become known as the LEAP LA Coalition. And I want to thank each group for their hard and focused work for, for such a long period of time. One of the reasons it's taken so long and it's been such a long road is that we've been working actively to build trust between environmental justice organizations and climate organizations. And that's a trust that hasn't always existed. I don't want to see us move more towards things like cap and trade proposals that end up expanding oil refineries uh, and increasing the effects on their neighbors um, and trading that for some other gain. That type of thinking is part of why I think the climate movement hasn't been a great success so far. We need to ensure that corporations, rather than their workers, 
bear the cost of compliance for clean technologies. And the best example of that, of course, is the truckers at our own port. The era of environmental racism and exploitation needs to end today. We're all in this together, and that's why we are proposing the development of the CEMD and the Green New Deal policies in partnership with leadership from the frontline indigenous labor and immigrant communities who best understand the real solutions from firsthand experience that this is the kind of partnership we need to move this forward. I can also see this department as a mechanism for the mayor to more efficiently carry out his sustainable city plan and his resilience plan. Just like every other department, the mayor will be the boss of the general manager uh, of this department and the council will draft legislation directing it. We don't know who the next mayor will be, nor what her policies may be. There may not be a chief sustainability officer or a chief resilience officer in a future administration. So it's important that we institutionalize this work in a department that we can support and continue. And we want to continue Mayor Garcetti and his team's excellent work into the future. The LEAP LA Coalition and I have submitted to the council file for the record what we see as the most effective budget neutral way to start up this department. I say budget neutral since that was the su suggestion of our esteemed budget chair, Mr. Krikorian, last year, and we have tried our best to do it that way. So here are the bullet points for what the coalition and I want to see, and we want to see it done quickly. With an acknowledged ticking clock of 12 years at most, we need this department sooner than humanly possible. As chair of the personnel committee, I'll do my best to, to help move that forward. So the things we want include creating this as a department called the Climate Emergency Mobilization Department, or CEMD, with the mission and vision detailed in the proposal, including launching a region-wide mobilization towards an honest and just carbon-neutral Los Angeles by 2028 in time to celebrate both the Olympics and our just climate success. Hire a general manager using some of the funds we set aside in the unallocated balance. Move the existing departmental chief sustainability and chief resilience officers to the CEMD four days a week. My understanding is they are not engaged in those jobs anywhere near to full time, and in this way we'll have a fully staffed department immediately, and every relevant department will have some skin in the game. Move relevant grant writers to the CEMD to secure significant resources, not just for this department, but for all departments. There's more money all the time being allocated from the state and from foundations, and maybe someday again from the federal government. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe just in a couple of years even. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that, I'm sorry. Uh, for first initiatives, we propose that we Develop and execute a series of community assemblies in frontline communities, indigenous communities, and with labor organizations in order to help develop the Green New Deal policies that the department will implement. Also, we want to develop, complete, and begin to execute a climate emergency mobilization action plan by a date certain, preferably by no later than the end of the year. Also, we want to develop metrics to measure and track the city's historic and ongoing greenhouse gas emissions, as well as criteria pollutants like carbon monoxide, lead, nitrous oxides, ozone, particulate matter, sulfur dioxide, and others by a date certain. Also, we want to develop a citywide climate emissions budget governance tool, similar to the one implemented in Oslo, Norway, that is integrated into the city into the annual city fiscal budget. And that's used to help track that we are reducing our emissions appropriately across all sectors every year. Since we introduced this motion, an no extraordinary number of cities, some of whom acknowledge our council action as their inspiration, have declared climate emergencies and are moving towards appropriate actions. I want to emphasize this. Since we introduced our Climate Emergency Mobilization Department motion in January of 2018, 404 councils from Australia to Canada to Europe, representing nearly 35 million people, 
have declared climate emergencies. These include Berkeley, Oakland, Richmond, and in December, London, England. So lastly, because there's been some confusion in the press about this, as we move this forward, I want to be sure we declare in clear terms that Los Angeles, by the adoption of this department, officially acknowledges and declares a climate emergency. I want to end with some words from one of the letters of support that we received, submitted by international climate leader Naomi Klein and her partner organization in our coalition called The Leap. She wrote about our efforts today. What happens in Los Angeles will be a model for the country and cities around the world for a truly ambitious transition. If you decide to proceed and create a department that is grounded in justice and accountability to your most vulnerable communities, this groundbreaking initiative will confirm your city's place at the very forefront of global climate leadership. That sounds about right to me, so let's do it. And thank you, Madam Chair. So colleagues, why don't we go ahead and hear from the CLA's office and the CEO's office on their preliminary report before we open it up for discussion. Does that sound good? Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ida Rubio and I'm with the CAO's office. Um, so today you're hearing a joint report from the CAO and the CLA. I'm, I'm here at the table with my colleagues Sarai Baga from the CAO and Rafael Prieto from the CLA. We apologize for the late release and you guys all have copies and there's copies in the back for the public. So just going over a little bit of the background. Last year in April, the City Council approved a motion instructing the CAO and the CLA to report back on the feasibility of establishing a new Climate Emergency Mobilization Department, which would essentially have authority and oversight in planning and coordinating the City's response to climate change. Additionally, it would include a public education and outreach component and possibly a stakeholder commission uh, including frontline communities. The context for this motion centers on the unprecedented wildfires, mudslides, and extreme weather conditions which our city has been dealing with. We know that climate change is here and it's expected to increase and grow in severity. The report issued uh, talks about three recent reports released in the public regarding climate change and the dire impacts that it will have on the, uh, the world. Uh, so our, our report does provide a recommendation, but we also uh, wanted to provide some options for consideration and a platform for you council members so that you have some discussion. Uh, the city currently is providing leadership regarding climate change. Uh, the mayor and the council have both uh, worked diligently on these efforts. There have been various reports that have been released uh, reg regarding efforts and strategies that are being led by departments. Um, the city appointed the first chief sustainability officer and the chief resilience officer in the mayor's office uh, to lead the charge on climate change and sustainability. Uh, we also have the general plan, which is being updated by the Department of Planning, which will also incorporate uh, sustainability and climate action strategies as part of that uh, initiative going forward. Uh, I also wanted to note about, uh, talk to you about the uh, Resilient LA that was released by the mayor's office. It's a very comprehensive document that talks about strategies, goals, and um, action plans uh, regarding central themes centered around climate change and the things the city can do to achieve those, along with a timeline to achieve those. So the city, the city uh, is collectively providing a significant leadership on this. I know the specific request is to establish a department uh, so my colleagues will uh, touch on that subject next. Good afternoon, members, Madam Chair, members. I'm Rafael Pedro with the CLA's office. So as we were working on this project, one of the things that came before us was what's the, what's the way forward, the most effective way forward for the city, um, given, given the matter before it. And we felt that there were a number of questions that we needed to raise so we could get direction from them and proceed. Um, one of the questions, I'll just go through some of them so to give you some ideas since we just released a report. 
One of them was, what, what is the specific mission of the CMD and its objective within, exist, within the city's existing framework and operations? The other component is, relates to city, citywide planning and coordination. What is the most effective way for the CMD to operate, coordinate, and what is the most effective way to conduct climate change mitigation activities for the city? Um, does the city grant uh, the CMD authority over other uh, departments that engage in, in climate mitigation activities? Um, we felt that was a very relevant question to ask and get feedback um, before we proceed on the next steps. The other component is um, how should the city conduct the tracking and reporting of greenhouse gas emissions to determine and assess ongoing progress. Um, there's a variety of ways to do this. We could have a centralized approach or, or a decentralized approach, which is kind of similar to what we're doing right now. Um, the other component, which also was very monumental for us, significant for us, was given the new monumental uh, initiatives that are being proposed with the Green New Deal, Green New Deal Los Angeles, and how we incorporate those, those initiatives within this, within the CMD or any alternative which, which the city selects. So these are central questions that we, that we decided to raise to, to get more feedback um, as we proceed with this matter. So. Sorry, Bago, with the CAO's office. Just to continue on, and for the benefit of the public record, I, I know you're all aware that the city previously had an environmental affairs department, and its mission was to provide policy guidance to the mayor and council and, and pursue grants rel uh, relative to environmental issues. Uh, the department also was the local agency, local enforce, enforcement agency, um, and all of these functions have since 2010 been transferred to other departments when the department uh, was uh, dissolved as a budgetary action due to f uh, fiscal issues. Looking forward, the city could choose to create a new climate emergency mobilization department with authority to oversee citywide coordination and mobilization efforts. You have choices as to how this department could be established. It could be established by ordinance, which would give it flexibility, uh, but it would also possibly make it vul vulnerable to the same fate as EAD. You could choose to create it by charter, which would provide it with authority, possibly authority over uh, charter established boards and uh, specific delineated authority over other departments. Alternatively, you could choose to establish a division within an existing department. This could be done temporarily to incubate the division or it could be done on a permanent basis. Uh, there's some synergies that are identified with its host department. You could also choose to stay with the status quo and maybe beef it up a little bit and consider developing or implementing a, a broader oversight, deciding to impanel something like a Blue Ribbon Commission to gather information and report back periodically on the city's efforts to address Climate, uh, climate mitigation. So you have a variety of ways you can address this and choices to make about how to implement those choices. So members, given the information that's been provided by my colleagues, we felt that perhaps the next logical step would be to proceed with the stakeholder engagement process since the variety of options that we could look at. There are also questions that we'd like to have that we, could, that we probably should look at as well, too, that that might be an effective way on an expedited basis to proceed. Um, it's simply a way forward. It's, it's, it's an alternative um, that you can consider. So. All right, thank you for that. Uh, members, are there any questions? Did you want to start us off, Mr. Koretz? Sure, I have a few questions. Um, Given all the efforts you mentioned uh, that the city is, is engaging in now, how much have we reduced our emissions so far and over what period of time? Yeah, we, we would have to um, defer to the mayor's office on that. They do have a metrics uh, dashboard on their website. Um, it does need to be updated. And I believe they are in the midst of working on some kind of a report back. Okay, well that's... That should be released, I believe, this year. So the timing of that, we would have to defer to them on. That's certainly something that we would look for this to do in a way that only one city, I think, is doing right now in the world, um, which is to look at... Uh, 
at each sector and how much pollution they're generating and how much they need to reduce for us to hit our goals. And then to be able to look at each one on a year by year basis and see if some are moving more slowly, but some can be pushed to move faster so that we actually identify our goal and, and achieve it and move towards it on a year by year basis. Um, how much funding is going to be in the mayor's budget this year for uh, allocation for the sustainable city plan and the resilience plan and others? Well, the mayor's proposed budget has not been released. Are, are you referencing 1920 year fiscal year 1920? Do we not have a sense of that yet? Since it's about, I know it's going to be released soon. No. When is it? It's being released in the next couple of weeks. April 20th. April 20th. Um, also, does, does a blue ribbon panel have to be a traditional blue ribbon panel? Because I think what we're looking at is not a panel of wealthy, heavily involved individuals, which is typical, but more of a frontline people advisory no. panel. Not at all. That was simply an example. Um, also, I'm a little concerned about the idea that we might run out of funds for this because I think no climate emergency department in the world is ever going to be allowed to run out of funds. As the impacts worsen, we expect each year we'll have to throw more and more resources at the problem. And the longer we wait to move, the more frantically um, we'll be throwing more resources. Uh, there's a study called the Nat Nat Natural Hazard Mitigation Saves. Um, from the National Institute of Building Sciences uh, released in early in 2018. And they say that every federal dollar spent now will save $6 in the future. Um, I don't think it would be too much of a stretch to say the same thing will be true here in Los Angeles as climate worsens. So what's your response to that? Yeah, we, we'd have to get back. Uh, I don't think we have, a, a, with regard to that question, uh, a clear response for you at this stage. Well, hopefully we can have all, all these questions sure. answered in your report back. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think that's okay. Any questions to my left? Mr. Mr. Uh, O'Farrell, go ahead. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Um, We've come a long way from the Keep America Beautiful campaign that was popularized in the 1970s with Iron Ice Cody, who was a 100% Italian, playing the role of a Native American, the crying chief. Um, and, and so I came up in this world with a deep value of the environment and a, and a deep value of, at minimum, keeping the streets cleaner. Um, and little did we know, although the signs were there back in the 70s with the first energy crises, that um, carbon, a carbon future uh, was not the future that we needed to uh, extend in, in the indefinite. Now we know about climate change and how it's accelerating and how it endangers all populations, all people across the world and all societies. Uh, so I'm very excited about this prospect, uh, creating this department for starters and uh, putting the building blocks in place for it to be successful. A couple of quick questions, and we just had a cursory look on the report uh, since it was just released. Uh, and I know that a lot of these things are, some of these uh, issues that are about to come up are going to be reported back on. Um, I, I think that we need to really seriously consider what the relationship that this department, this new department will have with the Department of Water and Power. Um, I think it will, have uh, it could have a very healthy sort of countering type voice uh, to the generation of power. We know that uh, we may very well be deciding in the near future about what the photovoltaic fields look like. A lot of them are slated to go into historic tribal grounds uh, north of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Those conversations need to be had in terms of how we're going to generate power into the future. In terms of water, I think we need to really talk about uh, the Los Angeles River and, and the opportunity that the, 
the uh, remediation of the issues at the river, including the brown fields and the habitat restoration, the benefits to the environment that the river offers us. And, you know, we have the Enhanced Infrastructure Financing District making its way through slowly. That will, reduce, that will result in real funding for habitat restoration and greening the Los Angeles River. And the reason that's important, it's, it, it touches seven different council districts, but it also, within a, a little over a mile of, on either side of the river, is one quarter of the Los Angeles population. So there's an opportunity in the river. So I'd like to see a report back on the relationship to this uh, Climate em uh, Emergency Mobilization Department uh, as, as that, with that as an opportunity. Um, and the, the other few things I jotted down are really a, a vehicle of, of projects, like green belts along our freeways, which I've talked about for a long time. But that then brings into to, to discussion our relationship with the state and Caltrans, where the freeways and the particulate matters are generated. I think that's very, very important. Um, so those are, those are, the, uh, are the big ones. And then if you could come back in your report with a complete and thorough definition of exactly what a frontline community is. Now, we all have our ideas of what that is, and that's important. But I think we want complete clarity on, a, on, on what that definition uh, is so we can talk about that as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you for your leadership, colleagues, on this very, very important issue. Los Angeles does lead, and we have an opportunity to show the rest of the state and the, the world, and certainly the rest of the country, that we can do things right, uh, and uh, it will be good for the general population. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alfaro. Mr. Kikorian? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll be brief because we have so much of the public who presented this matter much more compellingly than I think any of us could. And so thank you all for being a part of this discussion. And I, I have little to add to what's been said by all the members of the public, except that I want to very pointedly uh, congratulate and thank Council Member Kuretz for the leadership role that he's taken in this uh, specific issue of the CMD, CEMD for a very long time now. Um, and, and I want to specifically cite to the creation of the department um, because, um, you know, as, as we've discussed this, it, it's, it struck me, and as you presented your opening statement, Mr. Kretz, it struck me that the easiest thing in the world for people to do is to say, we should just do this by that date and, and be done with it. And, and that's the extent of the, the advocacy. But your discussion today of how long, how difficult it's been even to build trust among stakeholders, stakeholders who should have clear common interest in this issue, um, and yet to build that trust and to have the community input and to, to, to in, engage the stakeholders and to deal with community representatives and bring them together into a common purpose, that's hard work and it takes leadership and you've, extra, you've demonstrated that. And, I, and the reason that that's so important is this. I, I think we've all very clearly discussed the urgency of this issue. It's very clear from the, all the comments that have been made in this room. Um, this department is a very important part of making that urgency real, of implementing the urgency. But uh, it, it should also be said that creation of this, our sense of urgency and the work that we're doing in realizing a, uh, uh, a zero carbon future has not been dependent upon the creation of this. We've been busy on this as a city for some time now. Mm -hmm. And um, you mentioned, Mr. O'Farrell, the difficulty of, of perhaps interfacing with the Department of Water and Power. Well, this council approved the motion that myself and Mr. Bonin introduced some time ago to begin the actual work of building a plan for a zero carbon energy portfolio in the largest municipal utility in America. Um, so not just setting a goal, but actually getting the blueprint on paper of how you get to that goal. And the work that that uh, task force has done, again, engaging the stakeholders, engaging the public, will create a model for the rest of the country uh, to, to follow. So the leadership that this city has shown has been great, but 
um, unless you have one central focus of leadership that will come from a department like this, we will never be able to get everybody rowing in the same direction that we need to have in order to realize the short and intermediate term goals that are necessary to avoid the catastrophic future that uh, climate change is, is portending. So that's why this is important, I think, to move forward uh, with the development of the department. And regardless of what its ultimate governance structure may be, and I think that will be part of our continued discussion, but there has to be one point of leadership, one point of focus whose only job it is, whose only mission it is, to ensure that we address the climate emergency with urgency and with effectiveness. And, and I think that's what Mr. Kretz, you brought before us. So uh, I thank you for that. And um, I strongly support um, moving forward as we've suggested. Thank you. Mr. Cedillo, did you want to add anything before we vote? I also strongly support this, this initiative. I don't want to um, be redundant. But I think Mr. Kukorin makes a point, and I want to go along with that. If this is a priority, then the funding for it and the urgency of the funding for it should be reflective in it. In other words, if this is the most important thing to us, then it should be funded at the level it needs to be. It should have, if there's nothing more important than this, then there shouldn't be anything that's funded more than this. Uh, we had a similar discussion this morning with respect to education our commitment to, to move forward to support uh, the efforts to raise money because we said, well, children are our future and that's important, so we need to, to fund it. Given that if that's the case, then it seems to me that, that all these proposals should have some type of sustainable economic impact. In other words, we're a government that's based on taxes. Uh, we rely on taxes to come in and to, to pay for everything that we do. If we're going to have the scientists, the investigators, the people in the field, if we're going to do all those things, they get paid. Uh, that's how government operates. Uh, we have to make sure that we don't have adverse impacts, that we move forward in one direction and undermine uh, our very ability to have the scientists, to have the investigators, to have the people in the field. And so it seems to me that these proposals should have some type of some sustainable economic impact report. In other words, are we going to undermine the very funding sources that we have to fund government with any of our proposals? Because then that would be disastrous. And so we have to figure out, I don't think that we should base this on grants or, or philanthropy. This is too important, too significant. Uh, we need to have an appropriate a fair, equitable taxation policy, and we need to make sure that there's a robust and sustainable economy that can fund this priority if it is, in fact, our priority. Okay, thank you very much, members, for that. I'm just going to con – oh, yes. Can I add a couple things? Sure. Uh, one, uh, uh, following up on Mr. Cedillo's comments, uh, just an example of some of the all smaller cities and, and what they're doing these days. Um, Boston, over the fat past fiscal year, funded their environmental department to the tune of $11.7 million. Seattle funded its Office of Sustainability at $7 million, and San Francisco funded its Department of Environment at $21 million. And those are obviously tiny cities compared to us and clearly we're not in that ballpark right now. Um, a few things I'd like to see us look at uh, in the report that comes back um, relating to Green New Deal policies. Uh, one that was suggested in a letter of support we received from SEHA talks about, uh, in the face of mounting climate stressors, the need to guard against what's called disaster capitalism, which is the practice of taking advantage of a major disaster to adopt economic policies that otherwise would be unacceptable. Um, I'd like to ask that we report back on ways we can guard against that. Also, I'd like to see a report back on how we can expand the Cool Blocks pilot program um, in which neighbors work together on en energy efficiency and water conservation, waste reduction, and emergency preparedness to a level that we could look at rolling it out citywide. 
uh, I think the Brentwood pilot of all the pilots was the most effective and should be looked at carefully. Um, also, I'd like to see the Green New Deal as an accelerator of social equity and would like to see included the report back um, the creation of a task force devoted to ending the school to prison pipeline. Also, uh, one of my staff members uh, participated as a facilitator in Herb Wesson's 100 Dinners initi initiative uh, launched by, by Council President Wesson and Council Member O'Farrell um, to begin a conversation about race in Los Angeles. And I think what they came away with was that there's a hunger for this type of effort. So I'd like to see as a component of the Green New Deal policies a healing component in which the city government actively encourages the healing of racial, racial divides. Um, the city c contributed to creating environmental justice, uh, injustice, so uh, I don't see why we can't uh, help create the healing that we need to move forward into a brighter future. So a few additional thoughts. Very well. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Koretz. Um, so I'll just say that again. <laughs> Um, so members, I don't know how many of you were here, but I remember being um, in the audience in 2010. We were advocating um, on behalf of some of the uh, environmental justice organizations. I happened to be working for one of them, not to eliminate the Environmental Affairs Department. Mm -hmm. um, even though we didn't feel that it had a whole lot of teeth, mm -hmm. we certainly felt that it was a place for um, our issues to get addressed. You know, I'm 45 years old, I'll be 45, 46 in July, and for as long as I can remember, we've been talking about environmental issues where I grew up. Um, this notion um, that the, the world is coming to an end is how I felt my entire life growing up across the street from polluting facilities and across the street from the city's largest landfills. So my generation of kids that grew up um, across the street have been waiting for 50-something for years. And so when we talk about the Green New Deal and the, um, the excitement behind the Green New Deal, and, you know, I often say to myself, you know, where was the Green New Deal when I was born? Why didn't anyone care about the kids that looked like me when we were living across the street from polluting facilities? That's the reality of the communities that we talk about. Frontline communities are the communities that I represent. And so the notion of a Green New Deal for Los Angeles has to start and end in frontline communities, period. So, Mr. Koretz, I applaud you for always being at the forefront of environmental issues. You have, my friend, since I've known you. You have always led the way and have always been an advocate on behalf of the environment. I think it's time for us to um, not only talk the talk, but walk the walk as well and make sure that we are getting to the people that have been waiting for generation after generation. Um, I have a number of recommendations that I'd like to read into the record, gentlemen, so if I can do that at this time. Are there any other questions? All right, so for item number one, I'd like to continue this matter and direct the CLA and the CEO to take the following actions with urgency. Number one, meet with LEAP LA Coalition and CM CEMD advocates to gain further insight and clarity of the objectives, priority, and expectations of the proposed new development. Number two, review the LEAP LA Communities Assembly's proposal to inform and identify opportunities for inclusion of all strategies and development, develop, develop a framework for an RFP for a consultant to perform the stakeholder engagement process described in the joint report. Number three, provide a further recommendation on the governance and policy consideration outlined in the joint COA, CLA's report, and LEAP LA proposal, and how the city can best incorporate those policies and programs into the proposed department as well as existing efforts and prepare a roadmap with the time frames for critical next steps. Number four, report back with further recommendations on the use of existing funding set aside during last year's budget cycle for the initial efforts for the funding positions as suggested in the LEAP LA proposal transmitted by Mr. Koretz. Number five, report back with suggestions and recommendations for the upcoming fiscal year budget that the council should consider in its upcoming deliberations. And number six, Return on April 16th to the Energy, Climate Change, and Environmental Justice Committee with the appropriate updates and report. 
Are there any objections to that? See none. That would be the order, and I also move to uh, adopt motion on item number two. Are there any objections there? No objections, Madam Chair. Will you also incorporate Mr. Koretz's um, well, and, also and yours as well? Yeah. And I was just going to mention that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And my comments with respect to the Ms. sustainability. Please note Mr. O'Farrell's uh, suggestions on a report back as well as Mr. Koretz and Mr. Cedillo. Okay. Are there any other questions? Madam Thank Chair, you. I'm so sorry. This is for item number two. The number one? Back. Oh, for, for number, item number one. Right. Okay. There are no objections to adopting these recommendations for item one, so that, that would be the order. And uh, number two, we're just going to go ahead and move to adopt the motion as well. Okay? All right. Without objection, that will be the order. Our meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.